Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas, presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by the legend Teddy Atlas. Teddy, how you doing? Good. I'm great, Ken. Um, hold on a minute. I have something for, you know, right is right, and um, for British fans, I've I made crumpets. I made crumpets <laughs> and a spot of tea. Their man Taylor won. You know what I mean? Give them what's right is right. Uh, I'm here to serve our British brothers and sisters across the pond. I hopefully um, I'm doing it the right way here, uh, in a proper way that would make them happy uh, and that they deserve a little spot of tea. Cheerio, Ken. Cheerio. <laughs> uh, a little spot of tea here for my British fans out there. The crumpets. <laughs> we got the crumpets here. How do you like them? How do my like British fans... How do you I'll like I'll take it, mine with uh, clotted cream, please. Okay, well, for my British fans, a, a little jam, a little jam. And um, I happen to like mine with a little bit of butter, uh, a little butter here. But we're not here to serve me. I have butter. If there is anybody out there that would prefer some of that, uh, the jam goes on these crumpets very nicely. Let me give it a little taste here. Mmm. Wow. Wow. They're really good. They are. <laughs> they are really good. Again, to my British fans, our British fans, brothers and sisters, these crumpets are for you. I toast you with a spot of tea. Congratulations. Your man Taylor, he didn't let you down. Um... Uh, these are humble crumpets. I'm getting used to eating <laughs> humbly. It's, it's getting to become a thing for me, obviously. I am so happy that your man Taylor did not let you down the way that your man Saunders did. It would have been <laughs> horrible, horrible for two weeks in a row for you to, uh, to have cold crumpets. So I made sure that I made them nice and warm nice and fresh this was no small undertaking we love you this was really no nothing small my wife had to go to amazon.com she had to order the trays we ordered the trays to make the crumpets. these are real crumpets i mean this is mm -hmm. this is the real deal this is the real deal same ones they serve at wimbledon same ones same ones <laughs> she ordered the trays she cooked them she put it together she got the she got the recipe on the internet we have the best of jams um I see you got your finest china as well. The finest china and, and, the, and the finest teapot. O only for, <laughs> for the finest fans. For the greatest fans. There are. Our British brothers and sisters. Again, And a ahead. special shout out to, the, to the, all the Scottish fans. They were right. They were, I got no shortage of messages <laughs> telling me, I told you so. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Josh Taylor was a two-to-one favor for a reason. He was awesome. The fight was super close, but all credit to Taylor. He did the job. I mean, thank God for those two knockdowns. That's what's appeared to win the fight for him, according to the judges. I thought he probably had a little bit more of a lead, but nevertheless, he won it. He unified all the titles. The first unified champion in the four belt era since Alexander Usyk. And congratulations, Josh Taylor. He's awesome. He looked great. I'll tell you who else looked great in that, in that fight is uh, highlights how special Regis Progre is. Regis Progre lost a uh, majority decision. One judge had him winning. But um, again, congratulations to Josh Taylor. He deserves everything. He's, he's getting it done. The guy just backs up everything he says. Carry on. Carry on. Cheerio. <laughs> Cheerio. Hey, guys. Quick break to give a shout out to one of our favorite sponsors, Brave, the privacy browser. Other browsers don't respect your privacy. Brave is different. They build better privacy into a much faster browser. Three times faster than Chrome with a much better layout and experience, Brave automatically blocks big text trackers and intrusive ads that slow you down, drain your battery, and track you from site to site and hit you with those creepy ads that follow you around the web. We all know what we're talking about here. You look up a pair of Nike shoes and the next thing you know, you're getting blasted with ads from Nike for the next two weeks. With Brave, no one including Brave sees what you're doing online. So head over to brave.com atlas to join the 30 million people who've upgraded to the privacy browser for free 
Again, no cost to you. You can download it and use it for free. Switch in under 60 seconds by going to brave.com slash atlas, A-T-L-A-S. Today's episode is also brought to you by Athletic Greens, longtime favorite of the show. As you know, I've been on this train for a long time preaching the uh, benefits of Athletic Greens. Um, For those who don't know, about two weeks ago on May 1st, I won the Myrtle Beach Marathon first overall, beat everybody. Um, I turned 50 the next day. Uh, I give a lot of credit to Athletic Greens for keeping me healthy, keeping my immune system healthy. Athletic Greens is the ultimate all-in-one supplement for your body with 75 minerals, vitamins, and whole food sourced ingredients. It includes prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, aptogen, superfoods, and more. I love this stuff. I literally never skip a day. That's the honest to God truth. Go to athleticgreens.com slash atlas, A-T-L-A-S, to get 10 free Athletic Greens travel packs with your first purchase. Again, athleticgreens.com slash atlas. Cheerio. Carry on. Hey, a lot of credit to Ramirez, too. What a tough son of a gun. I mean, that that uppercut he got knocked down with, holy cow. He was on Queer Street for a while there. And credit to Ramirez, both guys. But Ramirez really, I mean, he showed a ton of heart to stay in there and fight till the end. Just an awesome event. I mean, one of the best fights I've seen in a long time. Hard to root against either guy. They both both came to fight. That was like a throwback fight for me. And... um, Curious to hear what your thoughts on the technicalities. I know early in the fight, you sent out a tweet that basically said, um, great back and forth, both guys aggressive, so watch for the counters as they come in, and that's exactly what happened. Um, Ramirez rushed later. in, yeah, one and round Taylor later. cocked that left hand and caught him. Beautiful coming in. And again, credit to Ramirez getting up. That was a bomb right on the, ju- right on the jaw. Yeah, it changed the... To- trajectory trajectory of the fight it really what changed was the second knockdown i think he overcomes the first one and i think yeah. he wins the fight uh listen again all credit no 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 spoiled uh no sore lose over here no sore lose over here but uh give credit to ramirez the heart the heart of a of of a warrior uh you know i don't know what he had left in the tank but he had a lot left in his chest and he just kept on pounding and you know, he had a big hill to climb, and he kept climbing, and he climbed, and he climbed, and he clawed, and he dug in. And I'm telling you, he came down the stretch like a racehorse in a Kentucky Derby. He came down that freaking stretch, and I'm telling you, I, I wouldn't have been shocked. I know people get a little crazy, but I gave you crumpets, so that's got to that's gotta mean something. It's got to pu- push you back a little bit for a moment to say this. I wouldn't have been shocked if maybe we could have squeezed out a draw. I know people are going to go nuts. It's okay. Give me, here, here. Let me pour a little more tea. Let me pour a little bit more tea. Um, uh, you know, it's okay. Relax. But the way he came on, he, he tightened it up, Ramirez. Uh, the knockdowns turned out to be too much to overcome uh but i i thought he tightened it up i thought he tightened it up down the stretch uh i thought he had control of the fight before the knockdowns i thought he was taking control of the rhythm of the fight Uh, i thought he hurt um taylor several times during the course of the fight both downstairs and upstairs i know they obviously i understand who did more hurting the man who did more hurting is the man who won. He he dished out more hurting. I, I understand that. But uh, Ramirez was, you could see the reason why I picked him. Uh, you know, he, he was putting rounds together. He was winning rounds, uh, early rounds. I thought he earned... I thought he earned some late rounds, like I said, after he was hurt. But he was definitely in control of the rhythm early on, going to the body, putting water in the basement, going upstairs and downstairs. Uh, really, really was a good fight. It was back and forth. Uh, but Ramirez had his moments. And then all of a sudden, that counter left hand, just like I talked about last week in the UFC great fight with Chandler and with Oliveira mistakes destroy you they destroy you yeah really and sure enough just like chandler made the mistake of posing ken after he punched him bang he gets nailed that crumpet not crumpet left hook i i i got crumpets on my mind and he gets nailed that left hook and and the fight you know obviously suddenly goes from being in his court to where it's lost and the same thing here 
Ramirez reaches him with right hand. A lot of orthodox fighters, they love and their trainers, they love to land, you know, lead right hands with the southpaws, the southpaw killers. I used to say all those years on, on ESPN corner fights. They love to do it, but you get reckless. You don't reach. You don't reach. He reached him with right hand. What did, what did uh, Taylor do? He slipped it. Bang. With his power hand for the southpaw, the backhand, the left hand, the hand that you could turn into, the hand that you could get your back into and get your body into. And he nailed him and he drops him. But the one that really, really changed this fight was another mistake. He gets inside Ramirez and he relaxes. I think we have to tape the replay. We're going to go over. We're going to break it down. We're going to analyze it if we have it, if Rob has it. But he relaxes, Ken. You don't relax on the inside. I mean, you know, if, if you're a lion tamer and you're in a cage with a lion, I don't care if you have to chair between you and the lion. You still don't relax. You don't relax with a lion. You don't relax when you're in the lion's cage. Well, he was in the lion's cage. He was inside close and he relaxes. And I think that maybe he assumed that the referee was going to step in and break them. You don't assume things in life. You know what that makes you. It makes you... Teddy, what do you think about the uh, people who said that um, the ref stepped in and put his hands on, um, on well, that's why I want to see the arm? Re- that's why I want to see the replay. I want to see. I'm not seeing it right now. But that's why I want to see the replay. That's a great point. It's a great point by the fans because that you're taught when, when that happens, you're taught to respect the ref. You're taught to respond to that, that you're getting ready to break, that you're going to break clean. And if he felt the hand on him, that's what he thought. Okay, I'm going to relax now. The referee's going to break us, and, you know, I'm going to take a full step back. That's, that's what that signifies. That's what fighters have been taught. When, when he touches you on the back, uh, he usually follows it with a command, a break, and then what do you do? You break. But... I always teach in the, in the gym. We always teach. You're supposed to teach. Keep your hands up. Protect yourself at all times. Uh, don't take anything, you know, for granted. Don't assume anything. You know that old saying when we were kids in school, right, Ken? Uh, when you assume something, you make a you-know-what out of out of me. You know, you don't... You and me. Yeah, you and me. And, and he made one out of you and me, especially me. But, again, I wanted to have that replay... Uh, I here don't, it oh, here, here it comes. My man, my man, Rob. My man, Rob, coming through. So here's the end result of it. All right, here we go. They're on the clinch. This is the second mistake. Here they are. Yeah, there was a hand there. There was a hand there. I saw a hand. I saw a hand! Wait a minute. There are, the, there are I those might, who would I say... I might have to take those crumpets back. Wait a minute. <laughs> I might have to return those crumpets. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Yeah, there's a hand there. But I think what he's telling them really there is get your hand out of there. I think yep. in all fairness, you know, we I can't be a sore loser. Got to always be honest. And he was telling him to get his hand out of there. But I think it served to help. It's one of those X factors, one of those variables, one of those, one of those things that happen that changes the course of a fight that you don't plan on. Go back again, Rob. Beautiful job here uh, getting to see this. So they're in here. Look. He relaxes a little bit. They're, in, they're on the inside. I think he's starting to relax a little bit. He gets a touch. There's the hand. He gets a touch. And maybe he takes it for the wrong thing. And you can see he's not really alert. He's in the middle. And bang, a blind punch. A blind punch. Give him all the credit for getting up from that. A punch that he doesn't expect. A punch that he doesn't see. He gets nailed with the power punch, the left hand, with the back foot, the power punch of the southpaw. He gets nailed right on a on a crumpet, right on a crumpet. Uh, and obviously, this chain, here it is. The hand, he relaxes a little bit. Listen, we could break this down, you know, seven ways to Sunday. At the end of the day, he relaxed a little bit, Ken. You're not supposed to. He made a mistake. His trainer, Robert Garcia, must be sick. Must be sick. Because I think they wouldn't have fight otherwise. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I, said, I still gave you crumpets. I still got more jam. I, got, I still got more tea here. No problem. Uh, I love you. But I think he wins the fight other than that. But look, he doesn't win the fight. 
He he got caught with the with the left hand counter, and then he gets caught with the left uppercut on the inside. He made two mistakes. You get inside with a fighter, you don't assume that you're gonna get a free ride. You don't do that. You you protect yourself at all times. You stay alert. He didn't stay alert, and uh, the hand came in there from the ref. Whatever that whatever signal that sent to to Ramirez in his head, I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is. He didn't defend himself there. He, he pulled straight back. He got nailed with the uppercut. Taylor, to his credit, took advantage of the moment, and he scored with that big punch. But credit to Ramirez. And I, I'm sure my British uh, brothers and sisters, our British brothers and sisters, they agree with me. They're good people. They're special people. They agree with me. Give all the credit in the world for Ramirez to overcome those two tremendous knock knockdowns one of them he's coming in walks right into the counter punch and the other one he doesn't see the uppercut you know to to be able to to be able to survive in the midway point of a fight a tough fight and be able to come back and he did come back to be able to come back uh the way that he did and, and listen maybe taylor went on co-pilot a little bit maybe went into that you know that that sort of uh defensive posture you prevent know the, defense yeah prevent defense the only thing that prevents you from sometimes is winning uh you know you go into that prevent defense and all of a sudden the other team marches down the field and look Ramirez was starting to march down the field a little bit uh again give him credit for the heart that he showed the heart of a of a real champion uh give credit to both fighters terrific fight uh, I said it, I handicapped it, uh, I picked the wrong guy, but one thing I said was, Taylor, he's dimensional. He could fight inside, you know, everybody figured he'd have the advantage on the outside, uh, he can handle the outside, but he can handle the inside. Everyone figured, all right, Ramirez got to go inside. You know, he's got to put water in the basement. He's got to get in the kitchen. Uh, he's got to get in the trenches. That's where he's going to win the fight if he's going to win it. But beware, and I said it. Beware, because Taylor sure as hell can handle himself inside, and he can, and he punches to the body, just like Ramirez does. He goes to the body really well, and he did. Uh, he could go inside, he could go outside. He's well-rounded. He, he's uh, very versatile. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I said that Ramirez would have to use the jab uh, to be able to take away some of the outside fight uh, from Taylor, to stabilize him, to keep him from dominating on the outside uh, in that with the you know with with a little bit of a reach advantage and and being that he's obviously uh a southpaw he would have to use he would have to use his his jab uh to close the gaps where he would put bugs on the windshield a little bit you know sort of make it hard for taylor to see him coming in you know and then when he reached it of course there was no jab he, he got caught that counter but I felt it was very important, and it was a difference when he used his jab for Ramirez to match the jab of Taylor, to keep Taylor, again, from controlling or dominating the outside. Uh, when he pressed, to press behind the jab so it wouldn't be easy for him to counter him or time him or see him coming in, uh, the jab would be really, really important. He did use the jab pretty well, Ramirez, in the spots that he did. Uh, you know, they both worked to the body well. They both worked inside. There was give and take uh, throughout the fight. Uh, it, was a, it was a good fight. It really was. It was a terrific effort by both men. Tremendous job by, by Taylor. Uh, again, you know, uh, having that power is like what Wilder has in heavyweights. It can make up for a lot of sins. You know, it can erase... It's like going to confession, you know, in church. It can erase a lot of sins, yeah, unless you're me. You never erase, uh, I, I don't think there's anything that could erase some of my sins, uh, especially going against my British fans. I don't know what I could do uh, to erase those those mistakes. But power is a great eraser, okay? And Taylor's power was that great eraser. Great example, that great eraser, uh, that took care of any prior sins. And I'll say one other thing, Ken, and tell me if you agree. I thought it was substantial when I looked at the size and strength difference. I mean, Taylor just looked like a bigger, stronger guy. He did. I, I, I looked at it, I said, whoa, this guy just looks bigger than, than that weight class. He looks bigger 
and he looked stronger. And you know what? He was bigger and he was stronger. Um, you know, I mean, for everything Ramirez did with the great heart, the other guy was a little stronger physically. Uh, I don't know what they're putting in those crumpets. I, 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 I'm going to get my fans going nuts after I was good to them. After I was good to them and I served them on a silver platter. I don't know what you guys got in those crumpets over there. I don't know if it's the same stuff they got in the meat in Mexico where, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it is. I don't know. I I, I, I don't know. I, I just know the people that Canelo says that if you go to Mexico and you eat the meat, you, you can test positive. I don't know. <laughs> uh, am I, am I going to test positive if I eat the crumpets over in England? I don't know. But, but all that aside, all of that put aside, um, congratulations to our British fans. We love you. Um, so glad, so glad that... Uh, Taylor came through for you at my expense, uh, at Ken's expense. Ken's my man. He's he partners <laughs> up with me. He's right behind me. We're shoulder to shoulder. Uh, I get hurt. He gets hurt. Uh, vice versa. But look, you can never get hurt when you're going out there and you're telling the truth and you're telling what you believe and you're not afraid to tell what you believe. Uh, and and you're privileged to be able to talk to fans of about sports and in this case about boxing. You never get hurt. At the end of the day, we're privileged. We're privileged to be able to do this, and we're glad we're able to do this. And um, the next time I go to uh, London, I'm, I'm going to have a couple of crumpets with you guys and some spotted tea. Me and Ken will sit down with you, and then um, we'll see whether or not we test positive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. We love you. We love you. Congratulations. Before before we get attacked in the comments, we know he's Scottish to American, Scottish, British. Yes, same yes, thing. I'm no sorry. No offense. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Scottish. Um, uh, I'm sorry. All like, part of the United Kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't mean, obviously, any, any um, you know, leaving. Uh, I didn't mean anything by it in any kind of, uh, obviously, disrespectful way at all. Uh, uh, the British people, the British fighters, they... Uh, Scottish, British, all of them. They, I mean, they show that great character, uh, the the great roots, the great roots of uh, great fighters. Reminds you of Ken Buchanan. Uh, you know, another the, Scottish the, legend. Oh, oh God, uh, great boxer. You know, great by not the puncher that Taylor is, but tremendous boxer. Uh, really, really tremendous boxer, and uh, proud. Uh, representative of uh, Scotland used to wear the the trunks, the the plaid Scottish trunks. Uh, you know he lost who? Well, he lost his title. He lost to one of the greatest fighters of all time, Roberto Duran. You know, to this day, some people will say that he lost on a low blow. Uh, you know, but. Uh, he lost to a ferocious young Roberto Duran who was relentless, uh, never stopped coming, banging to the body, putting water in the basement, and, you know, who knows if uh, uh, Duran, uh, Duran was capable of going south to the border. <laughs> you know, a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. every once in a while. But, um, yeah. Yeah, just great stuff. Hey, wh wh what did you think of the performance from Kenny Bayless? I mean, I thought that in, in Taylor's defense, I think he gave uh, Ramirez about 30 seconds on each knockdown. He really, like, gave him a lot of time, moved yeah, this did. way, moved that way. Then with the hand, I, I get some people would say when you're telling him to get his hands out of there, they slap the glove. But when the hand touches the skin, usually he's coming in to say break. So I could see the argument for Ramirez saying, yo, I thought he was coming in to break. Like you said, he shouldn't have relaxed. But I also think that he gave Ramirez too long on those knockdowns to recover. What'd you think? I thought he gave him some extra time. I, I thought it turned out that way. I don't know if he purposely did, but I thought I thought he was it, a little too busy too, right? Like I thought he could have let them a little fight a yeah, little more on the I, inside. I thought it, I thought in the end he did a decent job. I thought Kenny did a decent job. It turned out that he didn't really disrupt the fight or ruin the fight. Early on, I was a little concerned that he was going to be breaking them too much. That he was starting to meddle. He was starting to get in there. Like these are two guys that are going to fight on the inside, both of them, especially Ramirez. Let him fight. Let him fight. Let him fight. And um. And I'd, early on, Ken, to your point, I thought I was concerned. I was thought, oh, no, please. He's going to ruin this freaking thing. He's not going to let him fight. He's going to break too often. And, and it's going to hurt Ramirez more, the funny thing, probably, because Taylor can get it done outside or inside. And, yeah. um, you know, so it's probably going to hurt Ramirez more. But in the end, I thought he, I thought he settled down 
uh, he being the referee, Kenny Bellis, I thought he settled down and he let them fight for the most part. Uh, I, I thought he did a decent job. And and, and again, uh, with the time, I, I have to agree with you. It seemed like when he was giving Ramirez a little extra time. Again, I don't know if he was purposely doing it, but he was checking him. He was making sure he was okay. He was, uh, it, it, it did, either way, it turned into where it did give Ramirez a little extra time. That that was the outcome of it. I mean, that was that that was the fallout of it. That it did give Ramirez a little extra time, I guess, to recover um, at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't think there was too much to subtract from the fight uh, there. You know, that can make a difference, though. That definitely can be a dynamic uh, in a fight where a referee gives a guy too much time or extra time he can recover where maybe he wouldn't have recovered. But I think Taylor, and again, don't take this the wrong way. We're doing what we do. I do it on your side with your man or or on the other side with the other man. It doesn't matter. I'm not uh, in any way taking sides here. I'm just pointing out things that I think need to be pointed out. Taylor isn't the greatest finisher. He, 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 he's terrific, but maybe a lot of it obviously had to do with the heart and character uh, and resiliency of Ramirez. I already pointed that out, but Taylor wasn't a great finisher that night. You know, when he had him hurt, I mean, I mean sometimes, you know, it's happening at the end of the round. That's one thing. I get it. But when there's time left, uh, you want to see those finishing qualities like a Tyson had, like a Jack Dempsey had, like a Joe Lewis had, like a Sugar Ray Leonard had. You know, oh man, remember when Sugar Ray Leonard was losing that fight to Tommy Hernskin in that first fight? Oh my God, what a fight. He's losing, what a monumental fight. What an iconic fight. He's losing that mega fight. He's losing that fight. And then what happens? He sees those legs shimmy a little bit. He caught him with that big shot. He sees, he steps back. He sees those legs shimmy. Bam! What's he do? Nobody has to tell Sugar Ray Leonard what to do. He finished the job. He closed the show. He pulled the curtain down. And um, you didn't see that from Taylor. Again, it's not a knock. He's a good, solid fighter, Taylor. He is. And he's a big, strong guy at that weight. Um, but, you know, you didn't see those... You didn't see that quality, that finishing quality. You know, uh, maybe you give him credit for being patient, for not getting overly anxious, not running into something. But I would argue when you got a guy hurt like that, you've taken a lot out of his sales. He's not as, you know, Ramirez isn't a huge puncher. And at that point, when you got him hurt, you you try to finish this job. Because for the same reason that you saw, that I made a point, Ramirez came back. He came back. All right, he didn't quite get there, but he came back. Uh, you don't want him to come back. You don't want to get careless. You don't want to get reckless. You don't want to walk into something when a guy's hurt. I get it, but there's a way to do it. And the guys that are great finishers, they know how to do it. And Taylor didn't show that 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 ability you know he didn't show that side where he could go and be a great finisher uh, and i thought maybe he could have i thought maybe there was spots there where you know he was too patient or he was too careful or too cautious or you know uh taking for granted hey i'm winning a fight i don't have to take a chance okay look at the end of the day it worked out for him uh but there's always another day where maybe that doesn't work out for you well, be curious to see what's next for Taylor. I, um, I'd love to see him rematch uh, Pro Gray because I love Pro Gray, but I, I would be shocked if Taylor would do that. I think we're more likely to see him step up. They're both with top rank, so maybe we see a Crawford-Taylor um, fight. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're both, I mean, they can make that fight. I mean, that's the problem nowadays is you've, you're with a different promoter. You can't go across the street. And you can't get the promoters to go and make the fights. You can't walk no, across the No, without a court order. No, without a court order, without a, a mega, 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 mega uh, treasure chest of money, uh, you know, waiting for you, where both sides say the hell with it. We got to do it. The money's too great. Uh, we can't turn it down like Pacquiao and Mayweather years ago. But other than that, they don't get made. Some of the great fights, they don't get made. You know, um, is, you know, I don't know. Is he too big? Is Crawford too big? I wouldn't say he's too big. You know, he's 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 at welterweight. Taylor would be moving up, right, Ken? Uh, yep. Taylor would be moving up. But 
uh, the way Taylor looked and his size, he looked like he wouldn't have a problem moving up. And let's not forget, Crawford's a three-division champion. So he's moved up already three times. So it's not like he's a natural welterweight. It's not like he's an Errol Spence, who's just a big, solid welterweight that that can't, you know, that can't go down. I mean, that's what he is. He, he's not that. Crawford's a guy that's moved up from 130 pounds, now all the way up to 147. But Crawford's a tremendous fighter, tremendous puncher. He can fight inside and he can fight outside. Tremendous instincts. I'll say it right here. Crawford is the most instinctual fighter in the business. He's one of the most instinctual fighters I've ever seen in my life. Where, yeah, he's got technique. Yeah, he's got talent. Yeah, he's got a, all those things and ability and a big heart and all that stuff. But he's got some of the greatest instincts that you can't teach. Just innate instincts of what to do at the right time uh he he does what cuz used to tell me uh ken cuz used to say teddy the great ones make it up as they do it they just make it up as they do it like like henry armstrong on the horn he'll just make a tune he'll just he'll just hit new tunes that you never heard before you know jimmy hendrix on the on the guitar you know uh, just just make it up as he does it and and that's that's what Crawford is. That's one of the things I don't think people understand or give him enough credit for or understand enough to give him credit for it that he does that. But he really does. He's, he's, really, he's really special in that area. That would be, that would be a fight. Uh, I would love to see that fight. I would like, because you're not going to see him and Spence. I would have liked to see Crawford and Spence. Obviously, you're not going to see. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that dance card is being filled you know, by Pacquiao now with, with Spence, uh, so you're not going to see it with Crawford. I wonder how Crawford feels about that. You know, I, I, I wonder how Bud feels about his promoter didn't get that fight done. Uh, he's getting the big ones, uh, some of the big guys here and there, but that one didn't get done, and yet the promoter for the promoter, <laughs> you know, the other promoter uh, for Spence, uh, he got that big mega fight with Pacquiao done, but we'll talk about that uh, a little yeah. later. Let's put a pin on pin in that, and we'll come back to the welterweight division. A lot of lot of lot of activity to discuss there. But let's talk about the fight night, uh, the UFC fight night. Cody Garbrandt and Boston's own Rob Font elevating himself to a number one contender spot or close to a number one contender spot. Rob Font put it on um, the former champ Cody Garbrandt, pretty good, um, making all Bostonians proud. What'd you think of that? I know you watched that fight. What were your thoughts? Wow. Um, Font's a great striker, great boxer. It reminded me, it reminded me of Max Holloway's effort uh, in his last fight, where Max Holloway just boxed beautifully. I mean, tremendous, uh, tremendous striking, tremendous boxing. Who I don't know who Font's striking and boxing coach is, but whoever he is, congratulations, you're doing a hell of a job. Uh, he was, he was tremendous. Uh, and consistent and disciplined, and he executed all night. I mean, they had a great fight plan. All the credit to Garbrandt. What a what a what a heart. What a champion. He behaved like a champion. You know, he's a former champion. He behaved. I talk about it a lot. Behaving like a champion. Well, go look at Garbrandt if you want to know what it is to behave like a champion all night, all night long. He behaved. Not only did he take what he had to take, but there was never a give. It was never about surviving. It was about still trying to win. Yeah, he was taken, he was taken, uh, but he was trying to win. And he was all the way down, you know, all the way down to the end. He was trying to land that right-hand counter, which you try to do against the guy that's dominating you with a jab. You try to take the jab away sometimes with a with a right-hand counter. If the, maybe he makes a mistake, he jabs too slow, he jabs from too close, and on. Uh, you can nail him with you can nail him with that punch with that right hand and to Garbrandt's uh, effort to his you know to his credit he was trying to land that all night all of, he never stopped trying to land and he almost he did a couple of times but not quite clean enough uh, where it was a perfect shot uh, he came close he came damn close and um, again you used to hear me say on ESPN. Uh, when I was calling the fights at ringside, that a lot of guys are longer and taller. And Font was longer and taller, uh, and a lot longer. He had a big reach advantage, I think about six inches. And I used to talk about it all the time. Just because a guy's tall or longer doesn't, know, doesn't mean that he knows how to fight tall or fight long. Well, Font knows how to fight long. He knows how to fight tall. He knows how, because he did. 
He he fought at the right range. He fought at the right distance all night long. Uh, he really brought to light one of my sayings, you know, how I always say, Ken, uh, you set the table with the jab and you eat with the right. Wow. 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 I mean, he set the table all night. You know, it was like a buffet line. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't a, I mean, he said, the, <laughs> he said there wasn't a table. It was a buffet line. He set the table with the left hand and he ate with that right hand at the end of it at the right time. Uh, he used his legs beautifully font uh, to set up the jab, to use the jab, to, to dictate, you know, range, to keep range, to keep control where he could continue doing that and stay in that kind of mode, stay in that kind of rhythm. Uh, his legs and his jab uh, won the fight for him and his mind, his IQ, uh, his deliberateness, you know, his steadfastness, his, his, his discipline, the execution, consistent execution all night long, all night. And you got to do it all night with a guy like Gob Brand because that guy has a heart the size of uh, two oceans. So, you know, he, he's not going to let you do it for three rounds or four rounds or four and a third round. So you got to do it for all five and, and all five minutes uh, that you're in there. And he did. He did. Rob Font is teammates with Calvin Cater. They're part of the New England cartel trained by uh, uh, Tyson Chartier, um, who I, I don't know, but it sounds like they got a pretty good team over there uh, just outside of Boston. Well, Tyson Chartier, congratulations because you, uh, you know how to teach striking. If that's what you're teaching, I don't know if you're doing the, the grappling, the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu part of it, or you're doing the strike. But whoever's doing the striking, uh, just kudos, kudos. Uh, bravo, bravo. Uh, congratulations. Uh, and to the fighter for doing it. Uh, just, just really, really a amazing job of, of boxing. And uh, again, amazing job by Garbrandt uh, to all the way down to the last second. He's, he's trying to land the right hand. I thought the one thing that Garbrandt would have been helped by is if he used the jab because you don't have to have as good a jab as the other guy that's got the dominant jab, but you got to have a jab to, to kind of just to even the playing field, just to give him something to think about just to negate his dominance you know stabilize him a little bit he, he needed to jab i know he was looking for the right hand and he came close to landing the big one but he needed to jab just again just to keep well basically to keep fun from doing what he did dominating with the jab you know to to just enough to 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 take that dominance away to you know, to slow him down in that area a little bit. He he needed to use his jab, and he didn't. He he didn't. He was looking for the power shots. Like I said, he he behaved like a champion all night. I thought he would have been helped with the jab, uh, but wasn't to be. Uh, Font again, tremendous job. Uh, kudos and bravo to both men for their talent and behavior as titans, and they are they are titans. All these guys, they really are. Well, speaking of Titans in the co-main, we had um, probably the best nickname in the uh, in the in the UFC: Carla the Cookie Monster Espaza versus um, Jan Shaunan. And um, oh my God, what a battering at the end! That finish with the elbow. She had her stuck in a crucifix mount and was dropping elbows on her, busted her up, just a bloody mess. I was sitting on the couch watching the fight with my daughter and they showed a replay and I was like, oh, Tensei, look at this elbow to the head. And she's like, dad, come on, I'm about to go to bed. She's scared of her own shadow. She was traumatized by all the blood. But credit to Carla Esparza. Man, she looks awesome. She was, I think, I think she has a win over Rose Namajunas, and she might be the number one contender, so it might be the next fight for Rose. But that'd be a good one. Two world-class people, and not just fighters. But um, excellent, excellent fight from Carla Espaza. Really put it on um, the Chinese fighter, Jan. What'd you think? Yeah, no, I mean, to your point, first of all, it went off as just about an uh, even betting fight. Uh, and Am I correct, Ken? I, I yep, think it went yep. off. Close and, to dead even. Yeah, and so obviously that suggests that it's supposed to be basically a toss-up fight, that that's what the people think it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a toss-up fight. And obviously it turned out to be anything but, anything but a toss-up because, uh, as you said, Espaza put it on her. I mean, she dominated every, and that's what was so impressive, that it goes in as an even betting fight, a toss-up uh, fight, 
And what does she do? Uh, you know, be enough to win, but to dominate. Uh, wow. Um, every second that she's in that octagon, she dominated. Uh, you know, immediately, the first thing that struck me, Ken, I always think that geography is the most important part. Who wins the battle of geography in a fight, whether it's in a ring or whether it's in an octagon? And immediately winning the battle of geography uh, was responsible by getting close and taking Yang to the, to the ground and just, as you said, dominating with both her wrestling skills and you know, technique, her greater physical strength too was very, I think that was very apparent. I mean, her greater skills on the floor, uh, technical wise, but wow, she's strong. She's strong. And and the difference of strength. Uh, again, kind of like Taylor, you know, a little bit like Taylor and uh, Ramirez. And Ramirez, a little bit, you know, you could see Taylor was bigger and stronger. Uh, but in this case, they got on the mat and it was, it was so obvious that Esposa was just physically stronger uh, and better uh, in that geography. She got to where she wanted to get. Uh, impressive, impressive, dominant performance uh, by her. She deserves, I think, and you would think would get another title shot. Uh, and definitely, definitely, I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to really make an argument for deserving a title shot, I think she uh, put that argument forward. Oh, for sure. She looked she looked fantastic, and uh, look forward to seeing her in the future, pro possibly in a title fight. Um, well, we were talking about boxing. Let's get back into it because uh, big shakeup in the heavyweight division. Um, the Saudis are gonna have to wait to um, gonna have to wait to uh, get some positive press for now. <laughs> for now, we'll be left with gas uh, prices might go up. They might be a little pissed. <laughs> they might be a little pissed. <laughs> yeah um we'll get into the we'll get into that much more in the future if that fight does end up there because there's it's not without controversy and uh there's some people with some very strong opinions about that nevertheless tyson fury ordered to fight deontay wilder in a trilogy per a court order it seemed to go from okay it's on in the um it's on in saudi arabia and literally in a course of maybe 48 hours from its official to like oh no that fight's off and fury wilder 3 is on for july 24th like without missing a beat it's almost like was that always did they always know that was going to happen um anthony joshua seemed to be very pissed off very upset tweeting his frustration with tyson fury they were going back and forth you know, you expect that from Fury, but you very rarely ever hear Anthony Joshua talking as aggressively and angrily as he was, and 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 rightfully so. I mean, the, the, the Fury's team had to know that this was a potential outcome. Um, but Wilder's going to get another shot at him. I don't know that that's the best decision for Wilder. Um, I mean, obviously he's got the big eraser, but I mean, the way Tyson Fury beat him up in the last fight, I don't know. I don't know why he would be rushing to get in there with him again. But what do you think on that one? Well, I mean, listen, Wilder's got pride. Part of the reason why, you know, I mean, it was so hard for him to accept everything in the way he was beaten down was his pride. His pride has been trampled on. Uh, that's part. I thought he did a terrible thing in hiring. I thought he showed bad character, okay? I say what I believe. I think that's why people listen to this show and we appreciate you all and with me and Ken. We say what we believe, okay? On either side, either side of the aisle. There is no side with us. It's the right side. It's what we believe to be true. And I thought it was horrible what he did to Mark Whelan, not only firing him for stopping a fight, but then blaming him and saying he poisoned the water. He put something... I mean, please. First, he started saying that it was the... Costume was too heavy. Was forty five pounds, and it I took just, his Teddy, legs. Just the fact that you're using the word costume in a fight is funny enough. Don't yeah, wear a costume. I, well, Act yeah. like a friggin' fighter. I mean, I, I, but if you're gonna wear one, definitely don't say it's too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> costume. Uh, let me just have a sip of tea after that one. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I... Don't say it's too heavy if you're gonna wear a costume. Um, that's, that's my advice for today. Um, and if it is, and if it is, please tell me that as a heavyweight, the costume was like 300 pounds. Cause if a 40 pound costume like took your legs away, then it doesn't sound like you did enough cardio or, or weightlifting in, in camp. Well, your mind is too weak in certain ways, whatever. You, it sounds like an excuse. It doesn't sound good. And, and to do what you did to Mark Freeland again, poor, just poor form, poor, poor character. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. You don't like it? All right. You don't like it. Uh, don't do it. You won't hear it. You won't hear it from me. Um, but uh, as far as this fight, I, I don't see how, you know, the Fury and Joshua fight, you know, is obviously off now. And it's only going to be a matter of time uh, now you got Wilder Fury 3. Y you figure that Joshua was going to wind up being announced that he's going to be fighting Usyk. That's that's got to be announced any second now. You would think. Yeah. I mean, well, it's been know, ordered by the WBO, so I think yeah. it's just a matter of working out the logistics. Yeah, getting a pen to the paper and working out, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and all that stuff. I guess. Um, I, but the first thing with this announcement. I, I have to say, and I think my fans would be, all fans would be disappointed if I didn't uh, go down this road. Um, but once once it wasn't Fury and Joshua, uh, I, I, you, you had to think, how could that be after Aram said it was done? You know what I mean? I mean, Aram had said, Aram said it's done. I mean, the only thing I came up with, I started thinking, wait a minute, Aram, Bob Aram, you know, one of the, uh, obviously, uh, legendary promoters in the game. Uh, he he says it's done. How could it then, like 24 hours later, it's not done? Uh, and then I started thinking about it. He must have said it on a yesterday, not a today. Yeah, see, that's the tricky. You gotta be you gotta be on top of yourself with these things here, Ken. It's important to always keep close track of those little things with uh, Bobby. I gave him a nickname, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Tails. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call him, Bobby Tails. And and with with little Bobby, you know, little Bobby Tails, uh, we all remember the we all remember the time the press had caught him on a little something he had said the day before, telling him. Bob, you told us the exact opposite yesterday, and Bobby quickly, Bobby Tails, I'm sorry, quickly explained, hey, hey, yesterday I was lying, today I'm telling the truth, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, it's not my words, right? It's not my words, it's his words. So it's awful, ours, yours and mine, Ken, we take this together, that we listened to him yesterday. You can't listen to him yesterday. It's very important that you listen to Bobby Tails today. Today. Because then he tells the truth. Yesterday, well, in his own admission, he lies. <laughs> he, hold on, excuse me. <laughs> he lies. He lies a little bit. But, but having said that, here we are. We're going to have the trilogy. Uh, the thriller, not in Manila. And look, it's gonna, he's gonna have to, with everything I said, we said the truth, you know, him blaming the costume, him blaming Breland. He better come up big here. He better come up. This is it. You talk about a, a, a moment. This is the moment. I mean, I know he's made millions of dollars wilder. I know he, that he knocked out all those, those guys that they lined in front of him and everything else. Uh, but you could also argue that. The first time, you know, he beat Ortiz, but Ortiz was 40 years old. Pretty good fighter. Southpaw, good counterpuncher, good puncher, good amateur. But he was 40 years old. So he beat Ortiz. He got hurt in that fight. He came back the first time, and then he beat him in the rematch, too. He knocked him out with the right hand, the, the, the thunderbolt that he has, that great eraser. You know, he does a lot of things wrong, Wilder. A lot of technical things wrong. Always did. But he could always punch. Punches are born. They're not made. And... But he fought a lot of... Hey, look, they all get padded records. All of them. I'm, I'm not saying they don't. But he. But let me tell you something. You know, he, he fought uh, a lot of padded records. And, and he knocked them all out. You know, like dominoes. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then you can make the argument the first time he stepped up with, with, you know, legitimate talent. I mean, really legitimate talent. I mean, Ortiz was legitimate. But again, 40 years old. But... When he stepped up to the level that you expect a heavyweight champ to be at when he's defending a heavyweight title against Fury, he came up short. I mean, uh, he had to draw the first time. A lot of people thought that that uh, that Fury won that first one. I'm not so sure he did. I'm not so sure he did. Um, it, was, it was a draw. It was close. 
he came off the floor twice. Those knockdowns uh, meant a lot for Wilder in that fight to catch up. There were a lot of rounds he lost, but there were rounds that I'm not so sure he lost the way that we took for granted uh, that he did, uh, you know, Wilder. But, you know, he got up off the floor, especially that second time, Fury, which was amazing. And then they have the second fight, and then there's no dispute. There's no draw. There's there's just one guy dominating. He walked him down. You know, he, he had shown throughout his career, Fury, that he could box. Uh, that he, I always said, you know, we talk about David and Goliath, right, when you talk about big and small. Uh, I always said that Fury was a guy up to that night was a guy who had the body of Goliath and the brain of David, where, you know, he, he, he thought he was a lightweight. He boxed, he moved, he used his legs, he slipped punches. I mean, you, you didn't see that from a guy that big, six foot eight, you know, 270 pounds, 260 some pounds. But you saw it with him. And then all of a sudden, what did he do? He changed. He changed. He, he goes into that fight, you know, he had a dress rehearsal, uh, for it against the guy from uh, Sweden. He had to dress rehearsal where he got the bad cut. And he had to go get it. He had to go press forward to win that fight. Uh, and then what does he do? He goes and he says, oh, I know how to go forward. I'm going to go forward now with Wilder. I, I see something, kind of like Max Schmeling said when he was getting ready to fight Joe Lewis uh, that first time. I see something. You know, I see something maybe in a character that's a little weak. Maybe he's a bully. I see the guy's a bit of a bully. Uh, you know, he's used to getting his way all the time. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go punch the bully in the mouth. I'm not going to dance around. I'm not going to box and take a chance that, that maybe he still catches me. I'm going to walk him down. I'm going go, I'm gonna go and confront the bully. And you know what? That's what he did. That's what he did. And he physically and mentally broke him down. Now he's got to come back from that. Just like Joshua had to come back from what happened with Ruiz. Same thing in a different way, but, you know, similar. He had to come back from that. He had to come back from where he basically gave up, where, where Joshua gave up in that fight. It was a lot to come back from. And he got helped a little by Ruiz coming in 280 pounds, whatever, eh, whatever. But he made a change. He made a transition. He was ready. And that's, that's what's going to have to be. There's going to have to be a, train, a change, a transition. He's going to have to be mentally ready uh, to prove himself, really. Otherwise, everything else he did in his career, besides the bank account, that's going to stay there. Unless he's a maniac and he, he, he's got spending habits I don't know about. Unless he's a maniac, that's going to be okay. But, but his, his legacy, this is it. His legacy, his reputation, uh, everything else really doesn't matter. What matters now is how does he behave in this fight? What does he do in this trilogy? That's it. The pressure's on him. The pressure's not on Fury. The pressure's on him. Whether or not your career means anything or meant anything will be proven in this, in this one night. So um, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot at stake here. There's a lot at stake. It's a very, very interesting fight. A lot of people think automatically that Fury's going to win. They think it's already a done deal, that, that Fury you know, broke him the first time, he's, uh, the second time he's going to break him the third time. Uh, it's all over with, with excuses and everything else. He doesn't have the character. He doesn't have the ability to do anything differently. Um, it's it's going to be a foregone conclusion. I'm not so sure. You know that saying, Ken? Not so fast. <laughs> not so fast not so I'm looking fast for, i'm looking forward to the build-up and the uh press conferences there's some bad blood now yeah there's some bad blood ken and uh not so fast first of all you still got that eraser the same one that dropped uh fury twice in the first fight and almost knocked him out the second time he still got that tremendous eraser uh you know, I got to figure he's got pride. I know he behaved like an idiot, uh, saying the things he said and doing what he did to Mark Breland and everything else. But I still, you know, I still believe he's got pride, uh, his own pride. And he knows where he is. He know, and he's call, he called for the fight, you know, to his credit. I don't know how real it was, but he, you know, he was... They were talking about step aside money. He asked for an unreasonable amount. But when you ask for an unreasonable amount of twenty million dollars, you're basically saying, "I don't want to step aside. I want to fight. I want yep. to fight." And you know that old saying: "Be careful, you don't get what you wish for." Well, he got yep. the fight. I'm just saying he got the fight. And to his credit, 
I'll give him credit. See, that's the one thing about me. Ken, I'll knock the crap out of you, but I'll go in and I'll be on your side 10 seconds later if I think I'm supposed to be on your side because I'm just saying what I believe for the reasons that they should be said. And give him credit. He wanted to fight. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a little strange situation because the contract called for a rematch. Uh, he, he had the rematch clause, but it called for it at the end of last year, that it had to be done by January, before, before January, before the end of December. It had to be done before the end of the year. Guess what? It didn't get done before the end of the year. But here we are, court mandated it. Here we are, they read the contract whatever way they read it. And here we are, we didn't think it was going to happen. Obviously, Aram and them didn't think it would happen because they were going for and Eddie Hearn, they were going forward with the big fight, the mega fight, the huge fight, the biggest fight maybe ever, jo Joshua you know, and uh, Fury. But a judge said, no, it has to be done. And here it is. Uh, it's going to be done, and uh, it's it's going to be interesting for a lot of reasons. For a lot Very. of reasons. Very fury. I mean, imagine you, you think you're about to sign probably a hundred plus million dollar fight. Although this will be a big money fight too. And if Fury does what he did to him in the first round, first fight, assuming Joshua can beat Usyk, and that's a big if, then you know, then they get the fight. So a lot of intrigue in the heavyweight division. Uh, I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, Let's talk about the welterweights uh, announcement that uh, Errol Spence Jr. is going to fight Manny Pacquiao August 21st in Vegas. Ooh, that's going to be a tough fight for Pacquiao, but my God, what a good fight that will be. Yeah, you know... What do you think? Here's what it comes... Well, part of what it comes down to, Ken. The first thing, when does this special, magical man and humanitarian, iconic champion... Uh, humanitarian to all the great people in Philippines, uh, politician, uh, so many different division champion, just just like I said, an iconic fighter. When does he get old? That's what it is. That's it. I just said it. When does he get old? I know. I know he's been beating the crap out of Father Time for a while now. Beating the, you know what, out of him. He, he, he nobody beats Father Time, but he. He has been putting a beating on Father Time. He has. I mean, he goes and he beats a young Thurman, one of the biggest welterweights, one of the most athletic welterweights and fighters in the business. Um, he goes and beats Thurman. Uh, I mean, it was extraordinary. Nobody thought he could do that. But here he is now. He's, he's in the same sort of position. Let's not forget. I know some people are going to say, oh, Teddy Evans Spence is better than Thurman. But at that time, I don't know. How, I mean, Thurman had taken time off, so maybe you didn't see the best Thurman. He had taken time off. He had one fight back after two and a half year layoff. That affected him. The one fight that he came back, um, he, he didn't look good. He got caught a lot of shots. He didn't look good at all. Um, and then he fought Pacquiao. Maybe he should have had at least one more fight. I don't know. But whatever it was, Pacquiao beat a young, strong, good welterweight, undefeated welterweight champion. And... Uh, now he's in the same position, but it's a few years later. I mean, first of all, Pacquiao hasn't fought for how long? How long has it been now? It's got to be two years when he finally gets back in at least. But uh, let, me, let me check the exact so, date. Yeah, check at that. So here he is coming off. Not only is he, not only is he 40, what is he, 42 now? Um, uh, he's 42, I believe, right? And you, you let me know. And he's 42. He, and he's coming off in activity. But maybe it works reverse with guys like him. Maybe it's like hibernation. Maybe, maybe it's like suspended animation where... July of 19, he will have exactly just over two years off. Listen, that's, that's terrible for some, some fighters. For a guy with as many miles on the odometer, as much experience as, as Manny has, maybe it's... Maybe it's suspended animation. Maybe animation. Maybe it's maybe it's a maybe it's a good thing. Really, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it serves him because he's not taking punishment, and somehow he can stay young, uh, and and continue to do what most people don't do: turn back the clock. So maybe it doesn't hurt him. Maybe it actually serves him. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but he's he's listen. Manny's a proud guy. He always uh, he's never. He's never run away from anybody, and he's he's picking a tough one. You know, he's he's 
he's t- picking a big welterweight. You got to remember when Manny turned pro, he was about a, he was about as big as uh, your favorite jockey. Who's your favorite jockey? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love Johnny Velasquez. I, you know, I, I love Cordero. Uh, I, I love uh, I love Mike Smith. Uh, I like Lunzi. I like. Uh, uh, I, I love all those guys. They come to my charity foundation dinner all the time, and they're very charitable people, very good people. Uh, so I love all those guys. But that's how big he was. They're, they're small, in other words. And he was small. And now he's all the way up to 147 pounds, and he's fighting a real solid, big welterweight. And Errol Spence, a young guy in his prime, strong, southpaw, so Manny's not going to have the advantage of being a southpaw in the ring. He's not going to have that. Started out at a, he started out at 108 pounds at light there flyweight. It there it is, Kenny. 108. 108 pounds. I said 105, so I'm off by three pounds. He's a, he was a jockey. He could have, you know, he, I mean, thank God he became Back a Back in fighter. 1995. If he didn't become a fighter, he would become a. He w- he would have won a Kentucky Derby, and and he goes, and he's he's fighting a solid, big, huge welterweight, who's an Olympian, who's got all the background, all the amateur background, the pedigree. He's got everything. Uh, you know, he's undefeated. Uh, he's a good puncher. He goes to the body. He's relentless with his pressure. Manny, Manny's, Manny's doing what he, Manny does. He, he's taking a huge challenge here, a huge risk. And again, I said it earlier. I wonder how, I wonder how Crawford feels that he lost the sweepstakes here. You know, because everyone wants to fight Manny because you get more money, right? It's a big fight. It's a huge fight. You're fighting an icon. And Crawford wanted it. His promoter couldn't deliver it. And now what happens? The, obviously, the promoter for Spence did deliver it. They, they were able to make it. So you wonder how Crawford's feeling about that right now. Um, but either way, Crawford or Spence, uh, they were going to be really difficult fights for Manny. And this, he's got to deal with this relentless, big, strong southpaw uh <laughs> that's undefeated that's just gonna put pressure on him uh listen it's i don't know uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a good idea at 42 years of age uh and being inactive for two years it doesn't seem like a good idea for manny but you know what that's that's part of that's part of the magic of being great and part of the magic of being Manny uh, is that he turns a lot of things that don't seem like good ideas into good ideas. That's what great ones do. That's what great ones do. It didn't seem like a good idea when Muhammad Ali was going to Zaire to fight Foreman. People thought he was going to get killed. They thought he was going to get physically hurt. His own team thought, oh my God, we're going to be carrying this guy out of here. And um, nope. Nope, the great ones have a way, you know, they have a way. Um, you know, I don't know, Manny Pacquiao, 42 years old, I, we're, we're going to see, we're going to see. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. But uh, it's a huge challenge. You know, Manny always had, Manny's one of the fastest fighters you're ever going to see. You know, the speed's not quite what it used to be. He's going to need it. He's going to need every bit of it. He's going to need every bit of it. He used to have great legs, being able to get in and out, go to the sides. He's going to need that at 42. I don't know if he could depend on those on those uh, wheels anymore. I don't know. But he's going to need them. He's going to need to give them angles. He's going to need those quick hands. He's going to need to hurt. And he, he always had power, man. He carried it all the way up to all these weight classes. He was a natural puncher. He's going to need to, I think he's going to need to hurt Spence at some point to slow him down, to gain his respect, to make him think, to make him blink, you know. Um, I think he's going to have to do that. But, uh, but he's also going to have to be smart, you know, and, and be able to get angles and, you know, as I said, use the attributes that he's had for so many years. Can he still use them? Uh, we're going to see. He's a special guy, Manny. Uh, it's That's the for kind sure. Of, it's the kind of fight that a part of you, with the respect that I have for Manny and the, and the, and the love that that I have for such such great people, is that I don't want to see him go out bad. I, I never want to see the great fighters 
go out bad. I never want to see them stay too long. Like Ali yeah. stayed. You know what I mean? Joe Lewis, yeah. Ali, they stay too It breaks your heart. It breaks yeah. your heart. I mean, as great as Rocky Marciano was, and Rocky Marciano, the only undefeated heavyweight champion ever, great. Brockton blockbuster, great. Him and Marvin Hagler came from Brockton. Unbelievable. Two of the greatest. Um, as great as he was, that wasn't Joe Lewis in the ring with him, you know, at the end of Joe Lewis's career. And you, you just hate to see the great ones, you know, stay too long. And I just wonder if this is going to be one of those moments where when it's all over with and we're doing our show afterwards, Ken, that I'm, I hope we're not saying, yeah, that's it was what we thought it could be. He stayed too long. I hope not. On the, on the other hand, maybe he pulls a Phil Nicholson and shocks the world. That's beautifully said, Ken. <laughs> For perfect segue because Nicholson just did that. Nicholson just did that. Old lefty. Old lefty, and he's a lefty. He's a southpaw. He's just yep. saying, you might be onto something. You might be onto something. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be onto something. It might be in the air. It might be in the air for the old timers. The old <laughs> South, timers. South Carolina has been good to a lot of 50-year-old guys. You know that I won the South Car the Myrtle Beach Marathon Um the night before my 50th birthday two weeks ago. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was... Me and me and Phil, two 50-year-old legends. I'll tell you, I'm trying to... I got an old-fashioned uh, old landline here. <laughs> don't call me! <laughs> All right, there it goes. Hey, don't call me. We're doing a podcast. But, you know, I never got to congratulate you i mean i had the i had the birthday cupcakes for you with the candles and everything <laughs> for your birthday which of course you deserve but i never got to congratulate you for that race that was a tremendous job tremendous job ken really thank you, was thank you thank you um i would have rather won the u.s open but i'll take the uh myrtle beach marathon win not a lot of wins to be had for 50 year old guys but a win's a hey, win <laughs> hey not a lot of people at at 20 25 could go and do the time you did first of all could even run a marathon forget about it <laughs> i don't think i could ride a bike in a marathon right now but to, to win <laughs> you know maybe if i had a few more if i maybe if i stayed off the crumpets i might be helping myself maybe <laughs> maybe maybe you british love you scottish <laughs> british Mwah. i love you guys but you're putting weight on me you're putting weight on me okay um but, you know, trying to make you happy, trying to show you the love. But uh, not too many people at any age, uh, younger, obviously, could run a marathon, period. And to run the time, what was your time? What was that time? 2.30. Two Unbelievable. Really. Unreal. Well, unreal. Great, great job. Uh, really. Thanks, Athletic You're, Greens. Uh, you, yeah, really, Athletic Greens helped you a lot. You're not kidding. <laughs> they, they did. They helped you a lot. And so did your barber, keeping you nice and trim there. <laughs> yeah, got a good team. Well, listen, thanks for everything. Congratulations to Josh Taylor, Rob Font, Carla Spires, all the winners over this past weekend. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Teddy, appreciate your time as always. And thanks for being with us. We'll be back next week. Take care.